we established Shoreland's Wildlife Gardens uh, initially in 1998. We started keeping injured and, and old animals to the zoos. And then in uh, 2012, we decided that we would open to the public um, and talk about some of the stories of the animals we have. So some are old, some are injured, some are part of breeding programs and go back to the wild. And a very few we keep because we've had them a very long time. Some of our animals are in their mid 30s and 40 years old and they'll live here for the rest of their lives. Um, so, but really nowadays we're about education and releasing animals back to the natural environment. So these are black eared marmosets, and the black eared marmoset is from Brazil and is a species that's been bred in captivity for a number of years in the UK. And these two are brothers and they were born in a zoo in the Netherlands and they came to us when they needed a new home. And they were brought up in a garden, so they lived in a garden setting um, in a small zoo in the Netherlands. So they're used to being out, they're used to birds of prey, they're used to members of the public. And they're quite happy scampering around here. Um, we give them a mixed diet of fruit and vegetables, um, but equally they catch a lot of their own insects. And, and obviously they eat a lot of flowers and fruit that naturally occur in the garden throughout the year. Um, the public don't really feed them, and they don't really bother the public, but it's quite a surprise to visitors to see them all running around quite happily in a very naturalistic state, as you would probably see them in the wild. So here at Shawlands we have quite a lot of free roaming animals, you've seen some of the monkeys, we have quite a lot of the birds as well. And I think we want to encourage naturalistic behaviour. And these geese behind me are red-breasted geese that come from Siberia. And we want them to be scrapping around and fighting and displaying, as you'd expect them to do in the wild. Uh, also we've got some registered panda geese and behind them some hooper swans. And for people to come here, rather than see an animal in a cage, to see a few animals just running around displaying and, and quite tamely moving around them is what we want to encourage because it tells a story. So these guys are white-collared lemurs, and the white-collared lemur is one of the most endangered primates in the world. Um, coming from the rainforests of central Madagascar, the white-collared lemur is in trouble because of uh, deforestation and also because people eat them. Um, if you're earning a tiny amount each day and your family are starving, um, you're going to hunt whatever's available, and the white-collared lemur is their number one choice in the central forest district. Um, very rare in captivity, only 19 animals kept in Europe, uh, only two viable breeding females. So this animal is at the very end of its time in captivity um, and is really in trouble in its naturalistic forest habitat. Uh, here at Shorelands we keep boys, um, these are two brothers, and um, we're keeping these and giving them a home um, for another zoo that's breeding them and, and we'll keep a bachelor group of boys and then uh, hopefully eventually if a female becomes available and um, we'll keep one of those as well. The free roaming monkeys may seem quite strange in the east of England, it's quite common in the west country, in New Jersey, um, where small monkeys are, are regularly free roaming in zoos and wildlife parks. Um, to, to get them to free roam, firstly we put them in heated houses and then we give them a wire cage run, as it were, a normal cage, and then slowly we let one animal out at a time and then we move branches further out with their centaurs and eventually they start to build up the territory. So here the territory is quite large, it's about 300 feet by about 600 feet um, of hedges and trees. Need enough cover from birds of prey, but you can get naturalistic behaviour much like you do in the jungle. They respond to birds of prey, they respond to, to weasels and cats and lots of vocalisation and lots of naturalistic behaviour, which is what we want to see. Um, but it's a slow process. Monkeys choose certain tree species, predominantly lime and cherry, and they cut these little marks in the tree. Um, and then when the tree starts producing sap, 
it will produce the resin which covers this scar and then they eat the sap. So they, they, they cut holes in the tree to injure the tree and then when the tree starts to protect itself, they eat the sap that it produces and it produces a sugary sap which they want. Previously we used to buy this sap um, and make it up for them, mix it with water, but now they can actually produce their own, which is far better for me because here I'm giving them a grape but we don't really want them eating fruit, um, fruit from supermarkets because there's too much sugar in it. We want them getting their own food naturally in the hedges and trees. So fruit here is, is not a part of the main diet. Fruit is a treat used to bring them out to see people. Because today, there's only a few monkeys in the garden. On a warm sunny day, it can be up to 15.